A meteor shower peaks and a comet continues on its closest approach to Earth. Let's take a look at what you can go out and see in the night sky for May of 2024. I'm Michael Martin, and this is Late Night Astronomy. Welcome to your guide to the night sky. I hope you all were able to enjoy the partial and total solar eclipse on April 8th. My wife and I went to Greenville, Ohio and had an incredible experience seeing totality for nearly four minutes as day turned to night right above us. The planets Jupiter and Venus appeared up in the sky and all around us was a 360 degree glow of what looked like a sunrise and sunset until totality ended. As we move to the May night sky, let's load up my favorite astronomy app, Sky Safari, to take a look at the next major meteor shower of 2024, the Eta Aquarids. If you live in the Northern Hemisphere, go outside around 3 or 4 a.m. in the morning on May 5th and face towards the east. There you will find the constellation Aquarius, where the Eta Aquarids appear to emanate from. Now this meteor shower is a difficult one to see from the Northern Hemisphere, but can put on an incredible show for those of you who live in the Southern Hemisphere. The peak of the shower for 2024 is predicted to be on the night of May 4th into the early morning of May 5th, but the Eta Aquarids can stretch over a few nights before and after the predicted peak. Perhaps 10 to 30 meteors per hour can be expected under dark skies for those of us who live in the Northern Hemisphere. But the farther south you go, the more meteors you will be able to see, with numbers possibly reaching up to 60 per hour in the southern hemisphere. Our friendly neighbor the moon begins the month with a last quarter phase on May 1st, new moon on May 7th, first quarter moon on May 15th, full moon on May 23rd, and a last quarter moon on May 30th. The moon finds itself near several bright planets and stars this month, beginning with a close pass to Saturn on May 3rd, Neptune and Mars on May 4th, Mercury on May 6th, and Taurus on May 23rd, and Saturn on May 31st. Moving deeper into our solar system, there just sadly isn't that much going on with the planets this month in May. Saturn, Neptune, Mars, and Mercury are all in the morning sky this month, barely visible above the horizon just an hour before sunrise. Uranus, Jupiter, and Venus are so close to the sun they can't even be observed this month. As spring turns to summer, we will start to see the planets come back into play, but for the next month or so, there just isn't much out there to see due to our respective orbits. After its closest approach to the sun on April 21st, Comet 12P Pons Brooks continues to put on quite a show for our friends in the Southern Hemisphere. If you live in the Southern Hemisphere, go outside about 45 minutes to an hour after sunset and look towards the west. That's where you'll find this comet leaving the constellation Taurus and making its way into the constellation Eridanus. From there, it ends the month in Lepus before making its closest approach to Earth in early June. Although it will technically be a naked eye comet for most of this month, Due to its low position in the horizon, you're going to probably need a pair of binoculars or a telescope to find it. Moving back to the Northern Hemisphere, this is going to be a tough one, but Comet 13P Albers will be moving through the constellation Auriga, and you might be able to pick it up with a telescope about an hour and a half after sunset, unless it's already gotten too low to the horizon for where you live. But don't expect much more than a faint blur out of this one. Our last comet this month is one we've been tracking for quite a while, and it's C2021-S3 Pan-STARRS. This is also going to require a telescope, and will rise high enough in the sky for good views after midnight this month, making it an early morning target traveling through the constellation Cygnus. It's galaxy season, and this month we're going to be exploring one of the most famous clusters of galaxies that exist, the Virgo Cluster. Whenever you're out observing faint deep sky objects, it's important to get away from as much light pollution as you possibly can, and that does include the moon being out. Let's begin by hunting down these galaxies this month by going outside about an hour and a half after sunset. 
Look up until you come across the constellation Virgo, and a collection of targets that literally has hundreds of galaxies all crammed into one region of space that we call the Virgo Cluster. If you live in an area with limited light pollution, begin by scanning this part of the sky with a pair of binoculars to see what tiny faint fuzzies you can make out. For most of us, however, a telescope will be needed to begin our study of this region of space. Let's begin in the lower part of Virgo by studying the brightest galaxy in this cluster, which sits at a distance of 54 million light years from Earth, M49. Stopping to think about each of these galaxies can really boggle the mind. The light from this object that I'm seeing in my own backyard left that galaxy roughly 54 million years ago. After exploring M49, let's move up to Virgo A, M87, another impressive galaxy that is pretty close to the center of this galaxy cluster. Be sure your eyes are properly adapted to the dark and spend time looking and studying this region of space to see what faint details you can make out in terms of structure in these fuzzy galaxies as more begin to pop into the field of view as you scan through this part of the night sky. A favorite of mine to image is the Coma Pinwheel Galaxy, whose beautiful blue spiral structure will show up in your astrophotography. As we move back down into the core of Virgo, we come across an incredible view through the eyepiece of your telescope or the lens of your camera, Markarian's Chain. M84 and M86 make up the brightest part of this intergalactic chain of galaxies. The beauty of this particular structure and the immensity of the hundreds of galaxies that make up the Virgo cluster is why I keep coming back to this part of the sky to observe and image every year. The beauty and scale of the heavens above is shown by few things like the Virgo cluster of galaxies. Those are just some of the most incredible things that you can get out to see in the night sky for the month of May. If you've enjoyed this video, please like it and consider subscribing to this channel to join our growing community. But most importantly, let us know what you're going out to see and image in the comments section below. Thank you all so much for your continued support and clear skies from late night astronomy.